I was recently given a product to review and it's called the Green Stock. It's a little system that I think is ideal for people who may have a limited space on a deck or a patio and they'd like to grow some probably most likely herbs and fresh greens. This is perfect for that. This is not a product recommendation. It is just a review and I'd like to show you the results of what I grew. So they sent me the system. I went ahead and unboxed it. I also requested a little disc that I could set the green stock system on so that I could rotate it for proper sun exposure. So this is the little system here and I'm going to go ahead and unwrap it here for you. Um, it came with a little cardboard instruction so it's really easy to put together. No problems at all. It's designed very well. And so I'm going to go ahead and fill these up with potting soil. Um, I'm not using garden soil or top soil. Potting soil mixes will have a like perlite or something like that. And I try to always grow things from seed and I like to direct sow most of the things that I grow. I try not to use transplants whenever possible. So these are just a few of the seeds that I'm growing. I'm not going to plant out the whole system. So I'm using, I'm going to plant some Chinese cabbage, some Swiss chard, some turnip greens, green onion or scallions as we sometimes call them, um, some French chertle and some cilantro and a little bit of parsley too. So I want to make sure that my first tier is nice and snug and I'm going to go ahead and plant some spinach. Now I want to make sure my soil is I think about an inch or two from the edge there so we want to make sure that it's nice and full so that when our seedlings come up they're not shaded by the sides of the system and I want to go ahead and moisten the soil real good and I'm going to plant my seeds. So I'm planting spinach and I'm going to put three per little, I'm going to call them pockets. And I've actually shown you how to grow spinach in a video and it's on my channel and I'll leave a link here for you if you'd like to check it out. I'm not planting this whole uh, tier here with all spinach. I'm leaving some pockets empty because I'm going to plant spinach again in about two or three more weeks so that I'll have a continual supply of spinach okay and I explained that in my how to grow spinach video that I like to what's called succession plant it now I'm going to put the reservoir on here and I want to make sure the little holes that the water is going to drain out of I want to make sure they are lined up with the pockets so that it is watered properly So I'll go ahead and put on my other tier here and they seem to fit nicely. You just want to make sure that they are snug right there. They fit like a little puzzle and there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and water um, the system and you just water it from the top and the water drains through the little holes on the top. Now until my spinach comes up and has germinated and as a matter of fact all of my seeds I'm just going to mist them lightly until I see that they're coming up. I don't want to use a watering can at this point because I'm afraid it might force my seeds too far down into the pockets and then they will not germinate. <laughs> Okay, so everything is coming up very nicely by um, the first week in April. All of my Swiss chard and green onions. I also planted nasturtium, which is a summer flower. So I went ahead and planted it anyway. And of course my spinach. A lot of different things were coming up very nicely. So I went ahead and I thinned out my seedlings, which I've explained that to you in my How to Grow videos as well. So in mid-April we had a, a snow warning coming through. So. I really like this part about the system. I was able to just throw a sheet over it and it's, it was so easy to protect my seedlings from what would be the snow or the frost that was headed our way. Um, that was super easy to protect them. So here are just some pictures of how the plants were growing in late April and I want to point out too that I did not plant what are called perennial herbs like thyme and oregano because those will grow and the root system will kind of take over probably an entire tier if I'm not careful and it would be hard to pull them out and divide them and do the kind of things you need to do with perennial herbs. So I'm limiting my system here for things that are grown annually. Uh, such as the herbs I'm planting or looks like cilantro and then when the summer heat comes in basil that kind of thing. So after everything had germinated and was starting to become established I started watering from the top and everything was doing great. 
So there you have it. There are some cilantros coming up. This is just another peek at some things that were growing. Of course, turnip greens are growing great. And I didn't plant um, kale, which is something that I normally like to, to plant because of cabbage moths. We have cabbage moths very bad in my area, so I didn't really want to have to deal with that. So I just planted uh, things like the other kind of greens I've mentioned, things I have very few problems with usually, like Swiss chard and turnip greens and lettuce and that kind of thing. So uh, the cabbage, everything was just doing great. So I was pretty impressed. As you notice here, I have a lot of pockets that were empty, and I think that's pretty critical in using this little system is to leave some pockets empty and every two weeks replant things like spinach and cilantro because once those plants have started to expire and they're starting to bolt and produce seed then you're going to have some new plants coming along because you've been planting continuously so that's what's nice about this system that's one of the things that I enjoyed was that I had um, I could just leave some pockets open and then just pop some seeds in there about um, every two weeks so I would have a continual supply of things like green onions and cilantro and spinach and the things I love to cook with Okay, well it's finally harvest time and I want to go ahead and harvest about, I guess about eight of these pockets. Um, I just want to go ahead and clip them. I haven't really been clipping any of these because I wanted to save them for this video and so I can kind of weigh all of this for you. So when I'm harvesting, um, I'm going to harvest some lettuce and cabbage. This is the cabbage here. I'm harvesting turnip greens and spinach and a little bit of arugula. So, and also Swiss chard. And remember, I have a lot of herbs in here. I just, I have been clipping my herbs, like the cilantro, uh, on a regular basis. But other than that, I haven't really been clipping the system, but I have been replanting. I've already replanted uh, two plantings of green onion at this time, and two plantings of spinach, and then another planting of, of lettuce. Okay? So I just took it into the kitchen. I washed everything up. I weighed everything and this is kind of what I came up with. I ended up with about two pounds of assorted greens and obviously you could pick uh, just uh, about four ounces uh, every other day or two and you'd have a really nice supply or salads or of course all your herbs too. It didn't take long before my nasturtium started blooming. So here are just a few ways that I used some of the various greens that I harvested. This is the cabbage that you saw me harvest and I just did a stir fry with that with some other spring vegetables. That's one of my favorite things to make. And then I also made some pasta salad with the spinach. I just put it in with some warm pasta with some smoked mozzarella cheese and some roasted red peppers and a little creamy dressing. And um, topped that with a little bit of nasturtium petals as well. And so there's that. And then my salad, I used the uh, lettuce greens and some of the arugula with some smoked salmon. This was a hot smoked salmon that I had in the refrigerator with a light dressing and some nasturtium petals. So those are just a few ideas. And if you'd like more ideas for recipes, feel free to head on over to my playlist on my channel. And you will find many more recipes over there to help you along with your garden produce this summer. Thanks so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.